on a new consulting client, I always ask, uh, you know, without using the word everyone, who's the market for your expertise? And, and sometimes this question re- really shocks the client into silence because usually they try to convince me that their information can really help everyone, but, you know, I, I never buy that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the, the information might be helpful to everyone, but everyone is not the most logical buyer for the information. And when I ask who the market is, what I'm really asking is, who the buyers will be, you know, which group of people have the problems that you can solve and, and, and who has the money to spend on your solution. Are there a, a number of other people out there who are selling similar type of information who could be joint venture partners for you that are already operating in that field, uh, people that you could create future alliances with? And, you know, and, and the other question to ask, too, is are the buyers easy to find? Because a lot of times, particularly in the, in the personal growth category, the success category, inspirational, self-help, those buyers are everywhere and nowhere at the same time. They're everywhere. They are ma- they're in the mass market, what we call the mass market, but they are difficult to pin down. Uh, in some of these niche markets, which I really like dealing in, um, you can identify these people either through their buying habits, their industry affiliations, uh, their professional certifications, maybe their career choices, the magazines and the newsletters that they subscribe to and read, and other kinds of relationships that they already have in place. So that's really um, the, the approach to finding the market. And, and really, the ease of contact with your potential buyer is what constitutes a viable market. Remember I said earlier that some markets just have legs where other markets don't. Well, this is one of the distinctions of a market that has legs. The, that ease of contact uh, constitutes a viable market. And, um, you know, by the way, th- these buyers and the points of contact where you can find them uh, really should be defined very, very early on in your empire building process because once you do define them, then you can begin to devise the marketing programming but also the products that will reach them and convince them to buy. That, that's really the, uh, the most important distinction of getting out to the marketplace. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to go ahead and mention real quick to, uh, to everyone that Janet has a just an absolutely wonderful free report that she's offering for everybody here on the call that's listening. Uh, it's called the Book Publishing Protocol, and it is going to help really detail for you what these beyond the book income streams look like. Um, you know, there are 52 different ways that you can take your passions and turn them into profits, basically. So this is going to be for everybody. It is absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, again, it's called the Book Publishing Protocol, and you can find it at and you're going to want to write this down because it's kind of a long, long URL, go to www.healthywealthynwise.com slash empires. All right? So, again, that's www.healthywealthy, and as in Nancy, wise.com slash empires. Uh, that's a free report for anybody who wants to just go ahead and uh, fill out the short form there and get it. Uh, I've got it here in my desktop. I've had it now for... Oh, probably a good month and a half, and I keep referring to it over and over again, guys. It is really, really phenomenal. Um, seriously, whatever your passion is, you will find a way to start turning it into a profit with these beyond-the-book ideas. Um, now, Jim, in this report, it also talks about one of the things that you're doing with your own brand, this, this instant income, which is a registered trademark of you, um, and that is that you're building a media company around the brand. So can you explain what that means and how our listeners can do the same thing? Absolutely. Well, if you were to look very closely at all the famous authors, I mean the really big names out there, you would discover that almost without exception they have two things in common. They have numerous types of products, these knowledge products we've been talking about, distributed through various market channels. And they usually have a mass media component, uh, component, such as a radio show, a TV show, newspaper column, film career, but what you don't always see uh, are all the different types of profit centers that they develop as, as part of their business. But rest assured, they do have these multiple streams of income that form what I think of as a media company. You know, they package their knowledge, they package their intellectual properties into different what we call media properties. Now, you know, just like the Fortune 500 media companies, uh, they own newspapers, they own magazines, they own television shows, uh, radio networks, cable networks. Those are the big media companies, the Fortune 500 companies that you hear about in the news, and just like they have all of those different entities and assets that they own, you can also build a media company of properties around your expertise, such as 
uh, properties like books and newsletters and audio courses and speaking tours and infomercials, uh, uh, digital products, corporate training uh, seminars, different kinds of things that, that are these media properties. So that's what we think of um, when we think of a, a media company. And I think when you, when you think of it from that standpoint, it gets a lot more exciting than just publishing a book. Plus, I think it also helps you uh, as an author, as an, as an expert, be a lot more focused on what projects you will become involved with. You know, when I think of building a new media company, which is what I'm doing with the Instant Income brand, I think of in, uh, in, in terms of creating different business units. And the model that I use, there are actually five different business units, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. But um, you want to think through, you know, where's all the money going to be made and, and where am I going to focus my energy? And, and also, which opportunities do I need to seek out rather than just reacting to all the opportunities that come in, all the people that call you on the phone that want to do business with you and different things. Uh, of course, you might do business with people that just call you out of the blue because it fits within your plan, but you don't have to necessarily be reactive. You can just be very, very proactive. And I think that's the way to really approach your writing and speaking or consulting career. You could do that in the same way. Now, in the report that you mentioned earlier, Rick, there's a chart. Uh, it gives you an idea of the types of profit centers and business activities that that you can pursue in the, these five different business units of your media company. Of course, this is just a, a sort of a, a map that I put together. These are f my five business units. But the first one is publishing, and that, of course, takes in uh, not only books and e-books, but also, also other kinds of things like publishing multimedia products and uh, little samplers. Uh, these are little mini books or samplers, premiums, what we call um, also, foreign and subsidiary rights, which a lot of times if you get a New York publishing deal, your publisher, of course, will sell foreign rights or subsidiary rights for you if you include that as a right in the deal. Uh, but there's other kinds of things, like a $29 CD of the month program. That's a continuity program. This all comes under the publishing category, the publishing business unit. The next business unit 